You are watching McLaren Port here on today's Health, and I'm speaking with family medicine physician, Dr. Reed Stromberg, about some health concerns that we see commonly in certain age groups and generations. Dr. Stromberg, in this segment, we're gonna be talking about our Gen Xers. So these are our age 40 to 50-ish, 55. So what are some of the common things that you see in this age group? Uh, so common Gen Xers typically have the same medical conditions we see in the older folks as well. Uh, diabetes, hypertension, uh, rarely cancer, uh, but it's certainly not zero. In fact, for cancer screenings, if you have a family history, uh, specifically mom, dad, brother, sister with colon cancer, it's recommended to start that colonoscopy at 40 instead of 50. Okay. Um, for lung cancer, there currently is no screening recommendations for anybody in that age. Uh, breast cancer, a biennial mammogram is currently recommended, which is every two years. However, we're frequently doing them yearly for most women. Very good. So um, how often would you recommend someone in this age group to at least come in to see you, like for a wellness check? If they have no medical issues, no strong family history, yearly is sufficient. Uh, typically, we're going to do their uh, blood work, check their cholesterol and sugar, and measure their blood pressure at that time. Uh, they may be able to have that blood work only every other year, depending on how they're doing. We had, you talked a little bit about what you're seeing in this age group. Let's talk specifically about metabolic syndrome. I think we hear that quite a bit. Can you explain what that is? Uh, metabolic syndrome is a group of three out of five risk factors, including obesity, which is defined as a waist circumference greater than 40 or a, uh, in a man and 35 in a woman, or a body mass index above 30. A high triglycerides are greater than 150, a low HDL or good cholesterol below 40, uh, along with uh, hypertension and or uh, uh, diabetes and elevated sugar. So when, this, when, when you have a patient and they have some three out of these five, what does that really put them at risk for? It increases their risk for heart attack and stroke primarily. Uh, there's been some evidence that people would be more at risk also for some types of cancer. And how, what do you, uh, how do you tell your patients what they can do to help reduce that risk? Well, usually with metabolic syndrome, we're treating the individual factors. If they have a low uh, HDL, we try to bring that up with uh, good oils, uh, lifestyle modification and exercise. For starters, uh, for high triglycerides, sometimes medication is the only treatment for that. For diabetes and elevated glucose, lifestyle modification, including diet and exercise once again, but sometimes it takes uh, diabetic medication you know, for blood pressure to make sure their blood pressure is controlled to reduce their risk. And for obesity, once again, lifestyle modification. You talked a little bit about cancer um, and some of the screenings that go with it. Um, can you explain, because there is a lot of controversy around how often cancer screenings are, are you know, should be completed. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us you know, a little bit, how do, you, how do you counsel your patients to navigate that? So typically that's a discussion with your doctor. I mean, there's various guidelines. Uh, the federal government through the USPSTF has guidelines for that, but also the American Cancer Association, uh, the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, all each have their own guidelines. And trying to navigate that can sometimes be difficult. For instance, it's recommended that people who've smoked 30 years a pack a day on average and hit 55 should have a low dose CT scan to check for lung cancer. This is a fairly new recommendation, um, but people who didn't smoke that much don't qualify. Colonoscopies are recommended for people 50 and over, 40 if they have a first degree relative once again with cancer. Uh, for um, mammograms, yes, uh, biennial or every two year mammograms are recommended, but frequently we're doing their them annually because of the risk to the woman. Certainly there's other risk factors that go with breast cancer that may trigger us to do other things including counseling and genetic testing. Prostate cancer is actually one of the most controversial currently. The USPSTF recommended against routine screening with PSA tests for men over 50. However, the American Urological Association recommended continuing those, but has since backed off on that to individuals based on your doctor's recommendation and or people with symptoms, men who have frequent urination, urine dribbling. 
So really, the, I think what I've heard is the most important thing is to have that conversation with your doctor and discuss your family history and what your risks are. Yeah, 100%. It's all really individual treatments. You know, we can, uh, as doctors, use those guidelines to individualize your treatment. And you had uh, mentioned colonoscopy, and there are some newer technologies. Do, you, do your patients ask about that instead of having the colonoscopy, what other options might be available? They sure do. I mean, some definitely have a reason not to want to have a colonoscopy. Um, the newest test is called Cologuard. Uh, that is a fecal test where you give a stool sample, and they test it for nine markers for different cancers. Um, that test is good for every three years. So it's recommended to be repeated frequently. Um, a colonoscopy, typically if it's normal, is good for 10 years. So if you're willing to go through that, and sometimes it is a bit of a operation to do that, um, you're good for a lot longer, a lot less mess. The last thing is a yearly high sensitivity fecal occult test, which is basically a poop sample uh, within a few days of each other. And that would be a yearly test. But if either that high sensitivity fecal occult test or the Cologuard were positive, that would trigger colonoscopy. Very good. And what would you tell your patients about the best ways to prevent cancer? So not smoking would be the number one preventable disease, uh, including high blood pressure as far as smokers go. Um, a high fiber diet is recommended to help reduce your risk of colon cancer. Um, for breast cancer, certainly mammography uh, yearly or every other year, and knowing your family history if you're able. Prostate cancer is to let your doctor know if you're having symptoms with urination. Dr. Stromberg, thank you so much for sharing this information with our audience. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching this episode of McLaren Port here on Today's Health. If you would like more information or to schedule an appointment, go to our website at www.mclaren.org forward slash PH Family Doctor. To watch additional videos, visit our website at mclaren.org forward slash PH Videos. This is Kelly DiNardo reporting for McLaren Port here on Today's Health.